Hey, what's up everybody? Dorn Aldana here coming at you with another kick-ass episode of the Art of Mortgage Marketing podcast. And today we're going to talk about the fear that holds you back. In other words, there is only one thing to fear and that is fear itself. So we're going to talk about how fear holds us back from fulfilling our potential, our God-given potential, our purpose, our greatest and highest use of our gifts, our talents and abilities keeping us captive in a prison of fear is not our destiny, is not our calling. But so many of us live in a prison of fear. And so how can we break free from fear prison and finally put it under our feet? That's what we're going to talk about today. And this was really inspired by me working with my clients as well as my loan officers. I have a mortgage brokerage that's licensed in Texas, Florida, Florida and South Carolina. We give away 10% of our profits to liberate kids from the shackles of human trafficking, sexual exploitation, sexual slavery, give them a new life, a new future with hope and freedom and dignity and love. So I'm super blessed and grateful to be part of that mission to liberate kids. And so we are building an army of light warriors and light warrior S's who are heart connected to our mission and our purpose of liberating kids and not only helping kids be liberated, but liberating themselves by setting up a business that sets them free to create a life of liberty for themselves and for others. That's our mission at Best Life. And so I'm interacting with loan officers all the time, whether it be for my clients in my coaching company or with my loan officers with Best Life Mortgage. And one of the things that I notice when I talk to them one-on-one, either you know on Zoom meetings or when I have the pleasure of being able to do face-to-face, which has been very rare, frankly, nothing as of late since COVID. Everything that I'm noticing about what's holding mortgage professionals back, with rare exception, is fear. Fear is holding them back. And there's a variety of different flavors of that fear. It comes in many different forms. But the element that is the golden thread that seems to weave throughout the lives of everyone that I talk to who is trying to step up into next level living, next level abundance, next level freedom, and and is feeling thwarted in their ability to do so. They're feeling stuck. They're feeling frustrated. They're feeling like they're not making the kind of progress they want to make is that fear in some form or fashion is holding them back. So let's talk about that, shall we? Let's talk about how to break you free from fear and really have you step into that champion version of yourself where you put fear under your feet and you step into faith and power and peace and you step into the best version of yourself to allow you to take massive action towards creating your best life that's really what it's all about so how do we do that well let's just talk about the different types of fear to begin with let's start with the newbie fears newbie fears are unique to veteran fears newbie fears tend to have something to do with Did I make the right choice? Do I really have what it takes? Do I really have the chops to pull this off? Am I going to be able to make it in this business? Or or fears have to do with debt accumulation as they're jacking up credit cards and putting things on the credit card that now they can't pay for because they're not generating a consistent income. Or maybe it's chewing up savings and going deeper and deeper into this net worth whole that they continue to chew up their net worth every month because the income is not sufficient enough to pay the bills or maybe it's just the fear of letting themselves down or letting their family down letting their spouse down maybe it's the fear of having their spouse believing them in them and being their cheerleader and their advocate and then coming up short and not being able to live out the promise that you know their spouse is seeing in them and having to stick their tail between their legs admit defeat and failure and going back to the day job with an office ball and a chain around their ankle and a glass ceiling over their head. Maybe it's the fear of just having humiliation and embarrassment of having friends and family see them fail and crash and burn and get chewed up and spat out. Maybe it's the fear of not being able to make this work and settling for a second best life and settling for mediocrity and regret, living in I can't afford a prison. And having their kids, or in one particular conversation I had yesterday, I was talking to a guy and he had one child, he had a son, 
and he came from a family line, a lineage of people just living a mediocre life, settling for a second best life, just punching punching a clock and settling for mediocrity and just getting by. And that's the family heritage he came from. And he feels this call in his heart to rise up out of that gold and to do something magnificent, to create something beautiful with his life, to create a legacy of freedom and achievement and living a life of, of not just getting by, not just making you, but making history. And his biggest fear is not being able to make that happen and failing and settling for a second best life and having his son see his dad limp along with his tail between his legs, admitting defeat and failure and never amounting it to anything and having that be passed on to the next generation, not being the example he feels like he's called to be for his son. So there's a multitude of different newbie fears, but you'll notice that the golden thread among all of them is failure, not measuring up, not being able to make their dream a reality, going back to nine to five prison. Those sorts of themes are very common among newbies. Not to mention getting their ass kicked financially, getting into debt, uh, having their net worth go backwards, having a massive financial haircut. All those things are a big uh, cost and impact for newbies too. Not to mention wasting time, time they can never get back. Six months, 12 months, 24 months of all that time, blood, sweat and tears going nowhere, only to get their ass kicked financially and going back to the day job. That freaking hurts. So those are some real newbie fears. And these are fears that keep many people up at night. These are fears that have people stricken with fright, anxiety, stress, depression, frustration, many sleepless nights, and the sense that they're not living their fullest potential. And there's a lot at stake. There's a precipice of failure that's moving closer to them by the day. And they don't want to have to sell for second best, but they feel the sense that the pressure is mounting. And what happens if I fail? What happens if I don't make this work? So that's definitely the hellfire of the pain of the problem for the newbie. Let's talk about the veteran for a moment. What are the veteran fears? Veteran fears are fears like, what happens when this gravy train ends? What happens when rates go up and I'm caught with my pants down, unequipped and ill-equipped, to shift into the purchase market. And I'm sitting on this one-legged stool with 60, 70, 80, 90% refis, and now rates are going up and my revenue is dwindling. And now that flowing faucet that was having me do the happy dance a few months ago is dwindling to a very slow drip. And I don't have a way to pivot into the purchase market. And I, wanna, I don't wanna have to chase after these realtors who don't give me the time of day. And here I am now clamoring after the same realtors along with everyone else because I've been reactionary and I haven't figured out how to crack the code on having a kick-ass value proposition. So now I'm just clamoring after the same realtors with the same lame-ass value proposition as everyone else. Great rate, great rates, great service, throw me a bone. And I thought I was beyond this now. I thought that I was beyond having to grind and, you know, chase after realtors, groveling for business. That freaking sucks, right? I thought that I had a stable business. I realized that I was in a delusional, optimistic state because I was picking all this low-hanging fruit with refis, sitting on a one-legged stool, and I realized, yeah, I need to move to the purchase market, but the money was so good, I just kept picking that low-hanging fruit, and I was just myopically focusing on taking the path of least resistance, not realizing Every day that I delayed in getting myself positioned in the purchase market, it was keeping me on that one-legged stool in a very precarious position. And here I am now regressing. So a big fear for veterans is regression, stagnation, going backwards. Let's be real. When you're used to making 300, 500 K and now you're going back to making 100, 200 K that freaking sucks. That's a big regression where all of a sudden you know you're living the lap like you're living in the lap of luxury you're able to stack the bank account the retirement fund you're able to do what you want when you want with whom you want anytime you want you're able to just live easy without having to worry about the money and now you're back to i can't afford a prison that sucks right so it's this sense of going backwards stagnation is not fun 
and it gets monotonous, right? It's like you're in the same place over and over again. It feels like Groundhog's Day. It's like, okay, I did the same thing Monday, the same thing Tuesday, the same thing Wednesday, the same thing Thursday, the same thing Friday. And it's just like mundane prison. Every day is the same. It's so boring. And it, it's hard to go back to work on Monday because it's just so boring. It's mundane. Sure, you love to help clients. Sure, you love to, you know, help these people get into a home of their own and help them with their finances. But when you've been in the business for 10, 20 years and you're in the same place, doing the same thing, producing the same results or worse, going backwards or just spinning your wheels in a rut of stagnation, that's get that gets boring real quick, especially when you're dealing with the same loan level issues over and over and over again, banging your head against the wall with the same issues, putting your fireman cap on and putting out fires with the same issues. It gets boring. It's like it's not a challenge anymore. Right. So for the veterans, it's just the life sapping, energy sapping, uh, vitality sapping suck of stagnation, boredom, mundaneness going backwards and the fear of uh, going backwards. So you might be kicking ass and taking names now, but it's like, when will this gravy train end? So the fear of the future steals the joy of the present. Have you noticed that? And now, even though you're making great money, better than most, it's like, how long is this going to last? And so there's this fear of the future that has you be uh, very hesitant to plan, very hesitant to you know, invest money in, in things at a at a very bold level because you're worried what happens. I should say for a rainy day, what happens when my income dries up? And so that's no fun either. It's no fun for the spouses either, right? It's like, yeah, we're doing great, but I have no idea what's going on next month or the month after that. And so you're just, you're going month to month. You're only as good as last month's numbers. And so it's the sense of starting from scratch all over again. And where is the next deal going to come from? It's the sense of, is next quarter going to be as good as last quarter? And am I able to keep this momentum up? And the fear of sliding down the mountain, there's a sense of that in terms of being able to provide for the family. You get your spouse acquainted to making champion money, freedom money. You don't want to live in, I can't afford a prison again. So there's that sense of like, I'm, I'm winning for my family now, but am I able to win for them in the future? And I don't, I don't want to be telling them we can't afford to do this. We can't afford to do that because I've gotten used to tell them, hey, sweetheart, you can do whatever you want. That's why I say slay dragons for the family so you don't have to worry about it. Or honey, absolutely we can do that. That's why I'm winning so that we don't have to worry about it. And to go from that to, I don't know, I think we should wait until it's on sale. I don't know. I don't think we should buy. I don't think we should choose the chicken or rather, I don't think we should choose the lobster and steak. Maybe the chicken tonight, hon. I don't know what's going to happen next month. So it's that sort of thing where there's no sense of certainty for the future. That's a big problem that comes with doing it the hard way for veterans. Let's talk about market fears. Market fears come with the swing in the market and the economy. Right now, we're in a crazy seller's market, as you guys all know. Inventory is low. Rates are also relatively low, although they've gone up a bit since when they were at their all-time lows. But nonetheless, they're still relatively low. So we have this vortex of still relatively low rates, very low inventory that's been exasperated due to COVID, people not wanting to sell due to the fact that they didn't want to be messing with people coming through their house who had COVID. And so we have a very limited inventory. We have a rabid buyer market. People are concerned about rates going up. They want to get in before rates go up. And it's this clamor after these very small number of, uh, you know, homes for sale. And we have people, you know, getting 50,000, 100,000. I saw in the news over, there was one place that sold for over 400,000 over asking with like 17 offers, just crazy. Or was it 33? I can't remember. It was just an insane amount, right? So this is the market we're living in. And so right now, the big fear is, okay, I got all these pre-approvals. How many freaking pre-approvals am I going to need to convert one of them? You know, I got 15 pre-approvals. We had 10 offers over the weekend. I only got one to convert, right? Or I had 12 offers over the weekend. I only had one convert. That 
can throw gasoline on the fear around, wow, how many more pre-approvals do I need just to convert one measly deal? And how long is this going to last for? And what happens when rates go up and you know all these different things? So it's really fear of the future around the economy. What happens as inflation goes up? What happens as rates go up? If you're in a precarious position where you have 50, 60, 70% plus of your business refis, that's a big fear. But also it's just a fear around how do I build my business in uh, this crazy COVID market? I can't meet people face to face. I can't network like I used to network. How do I thread the needle on growing my business when I can't do the things I used to be able to do? So there's fears around having your wings tied, trying to get deals done and trying to bring in more business when the things you used to use as marketing weapons are no longer applicable or no longer available. So those obviously can be big fears right now. So, I mean, I can keep going, but you get the idea. There's lots of fear and lots of different types of fear that show up for people. And as long as you focus on these fears, you tend to attract more of what you fear because what you focus on, you feed and what you feed, you fuel and what you fuel expands, what you focus on expands. So if you focus on that fear, what do you get more of? You get more of that fear. And what does that fear tend to do? Does it get you taking more action or less action? Less action. And what about the quality of your action? When you're living in fear and anxiety, is the quality of your action in certainty and confidence or is it lack of certainty, lack of confidence? Lack of confidence, lack of certainty, right? Is that quality of certainty attracting the success you want or less of the success you want? Less of the success you want. So fear basically castrates our ability to show up and shine and bring our best. We take less action. We take action less often. The action we do take tends to be very lackluster. We tend to half step. We tend to pull punches. We tend to play it safe and play it small. And the wimp version of ourselves shows up instead of the champion version of ourself. And so in that vibrational frequency of lack, limitation, and scarcity, you're never going to attract success. You guys know it and I know it, but it's easier said than done, right? I've been there where I was busting my ass, putting in work. Everyone else was taking weekends off. I'm hustling all weekend, I'm getting up early. I'm staying late. I'm doing all the work, but I'm not doing the mindset work. I'm just doing the work work. And so I'm showing up in fear, doubt, doubt. I'm showing up in a contracted state. And the best version of myself ain't showing up. The wimp version of Doran is showing up. The weak version of Doran is showing up. The fearful Doran is showing up. And that version of Dorn is not going to make a difference in people's lives. That version of Dorn is going to be transmitting a fear vibration. And let's be real. People have enough doubt and enough fear as it is on their own. They don't need my fear and my doubt. So I tend to repel the wrong. I tend to repel the right people and attract the wrong people. And that's not going to help me. And you guys, chances are, have experienced that yourself. So how do we break free from fear? How we break free from fear is to choose faith, to choose to recommit to our dream, to get heart connected to what it's going to feel like when our dream is realized, when it's achieved. How's it going to feel like when you're making the money you want to make, the freedom money that lets you do what you want, when you want, with whom you want, anytime you want? How great is that going to feel? How's it going to feel when you liberate your spouse from the need to work? When she comes through the door after a long day of work, or he comes through the door after a long day of work, they see the romantic lighting and the flowers. They're like, what's up? Is it? It's not our anniversary. What's the special occasion? You give them a warm embrace, a hug and a kiss. And you say, honey, I want you to call your boss and tell them you can't afford to work for him anymore. We're bringing you home. How great does that feel? Getting heart connected to that dream as if you already have it. Giving thanks for it in advance. Notice the feeling. That feeling is going to have the best version of yourself show up. You get to reconnect to that dream. You're either committed to your fear or you're committed to your dream. You're either committed to focusing on what won't work and what can't work and what if, what if, what if, what if it doesn't work, what if I can't make it, or you shift your mental focus on what can work, what what if it does work, what if it does unleash an avalanche of awesome. So it's getting heart connected in your emotional state to your dream as if you already have it. But that's not enough. It's not enough to be motivated. 
you can give motivation to an idiot, then all you have is a motivated idiot. That's not going to help much. So we need strategy. Doesn't matter how motivated you are. If you're having knees looking for the sunset, you got a freaking problem, right? It's not enough just to be motivated. You have to have the right strategy, the right plan, the right structure, the right support. So that means actually having a battle plan. Because if you're heading to a gunfight with a butter knife, we've got a freaking problem, right? You're going to get bludgeoned. You need to show up to the gunfight with a tank. Time to roll up the tanks. Be equipped to win. So it's not enough to just be motivated. It's not enough to just be heart connected to purpose. It's not enough just to be committed to your dream. You got to be equipped to achieve your dream. And that's where having the right strategy, the right structure, the right system, and the right support comes in. And that's why mortgage professionals hire us to help us, or rather to help them take the shortest path to the cash so they don't have to step on the landmines unnecessarily. They don't have to fall into the crocodile infested swamps because they have a roadmap, they have a recipe, they have a blueprint so they can bypass all the landmines, they can bypass the swamps full of crocodiles and piranhas and they can go straight to solid ground. They can take the shortest path to the cash to their dreams, their goals without messing around doing it the hard way because the people who work with us are smart enough to know it's going to be a lot more expensive to learn from their own mistakes than to learn from an expert. And that's why they hire us to go straight to what works, to condense decades into days. So instead of taking 5, 10, 15, 20 years to get to 300 to half a million or a million plus per year, they can go straight to what works, get massive traction, inject nitro juice into their rocket fuel, and to be able to get there in one year, two years, three years, instead of 10, 15, 20 years, and to be able to have a whole lot more fun, flow, and fulfillment while they do it. So if that's you, and you're noticing that you're anxious, you're worrying, you're fearful, maybe you're losing sleep, Maybe you're just feeling a tightness in your stomach or your heart or your gut or your head. And you're noticing that that's just a wake up call. It's like God smacking you upside the head saying, wake up. You've got to rise up and live by faith with the right system, with the right support, with the right structure, or you're going to be showing up to the gunfight with a butter knife. Wake up heading east, looking for the sunset. Ain't going to help you if you don't pay attention. You've got to turn a brow and you've got to do an uh, about face. you got to start heading west, not east, wake up. So that fear is just a wake-up call to get you to pay attention, to get you to get really real with the problem instead of just pretending it's not there. It doesn't matter how delusionally optimistic you are. If you're getting your ass kicked and you're unequipped and ill-equipped and you're going to the wilderness unarmed and naked, meandering without a GPS, without a roadmap, it's not going to go so well. You need to have a map. That's why that fear is there because you realize you don't want to be meandering in the wilderness, unarmed and naked. That is going to be painful. That means death. That means that means you starving in the wilderness or getting eaten by wild animals. That does not bode well. So fear is actually a gift from God to have you wake up, pay attention, to realize there's something really at stake here. And you don't want to just be casual about your dreams. Because if you're casual about dreams, you're going to end up being a casual T. So if that's you and you realize, hey, it's time to start to play to win. It's time not to just play not to lose. That's a loser's game. It's time to play to win, full on, full out. It's time to get equipped to win and get not just equipped to get in the game, but get in the game and play to win, period, end of story. So if you're there and you're wanting to add an extra $100,000, $200,000, $300,000 plus to your annual income. You want to start working smarter versus just harder. You don't want to do with a caveman style method of marketing, cold calling the same 40 freaking realtors every Monday. You want to be able to be wicked equipped where you can start attracting the ideal partners. I'm getting excited over here. I'm knocking over my water glass. You get The point though is about really attracting the right partners versus chasing being able to have a kick-ass value proposition that flips the script so that they need you more than you need them, right? To be able to have a system with the words that work that get them hot for what you got. So you can start booking appointments with top producing realtors like a hot knife through butter. If you want a system that allows you to go straight to what works so that you can be like one of my clients, Jelani Dorsey, who literally took his annual income last year and made it his monthly income last month. If you want to be like my man, Brett Clark, who from a standing start with just one month in the business, 
went from zero to doing two million in volume in his fourth month and even more in his fifth month in his pipeline, starting from a standing start. If you wanna know how to condense tech decades into days and to be able to double, triple, quadruple, even quintuple your income while working less hours, then I invite you to book a breakthrough call where we'll lift up the hood on your business. We'll look at what's working, what's not working, where are you at now, where you wanna be. And if we can help you create a breakthrough, by all means, I'll show you what that looks like. If you're working with one of my consultants, they'll show you what it looks like. If not, we'll be the first to advise you to pass on our services. But either way, you'll leave that meeting with massive value, massive clarity. Chances are we'll have some fun along the way. So if that sounds meaningful and worthwhile to you, if that sounds fair to you, go ahead and book a call at mortgagemarketingcoach.com forward slash apply. Again, that's mortgagemarketingcoach.com forward slash apply. Thanks for hanging with me. Thanks for tuning in. This is Doran Aldana from the Art of Mortgage Marketing podcast coming at you with the real deal on what it really takes to take your business to the next level, to break out of the fear, to break out of fear prison, to put fear under your feet and to live by faith, not fear, and to get yourself equipped to win so you can live a magical life, an abundant life, a fulfilling, a fulfilling life, to live your best life so that you can't just increase your standard of living. That's a great start, but we're blessed to be a blessing, to not just increase your standard of living, but to increase your standard of giving, to be a light in the darkness, to be a difference maker, to be a conduit of contribution. So if that inspires you and you want to really show up and shine and be a leader in this, this industry and to be that example for your kids of what it looks like, not just to have dreams, but to make them real, book a call, mortgagemarketingcoach.com forward slash apply. Thanks for hanging with me. Be blessed. We'll talk to you on the next episode. Peace.